Hey guys and welcome to Quality Shot. I have with me Venu from Venu's Cricket Catch-Up and Astrid from Cricket For Us 2.0. Okay, we're going to review all three Boxing Day test matches, so you're in for a treat. So if you have been under a rock for the past uh, five days, uh, you'll be unaware of what's been going on, so let me refresh your memory. Uh, Pakistan just fell short on day five. Uh, falling to New Zealand and losing by 101 runs. But that doesn't tell the whole story, uh, as it seemed like they would be maybe three to four overs. Um, well, three to four overs from drawing a very improbable uh, task, it seemed, at the start of day five. Um, but obviously, they got away with it. Uh, so we're going to do that one first. But before I do, I'll just quickly uh, go through the other two results. Um, India won by eight wickets against Australia in a very impressive performance, bouncing back from a very, well, I'd say dismal uh, day three of the first test uh, for them, obviously getting bowled up for 36, uh, but then eventually coming back uh, with vengeance uh, without the great Virat Kohli as well. And uh, worth noting, uh, Pakistan didn't have Bob Rosen for uh, their test match as well, to be fair as well. Um, but yeah, they performed very well. And then Venu, who obviously has a bit of a vested interest in the last one, uh, especially um, Sri Lanka versus South Africa. Sri Lanka, I think, as we said, looked the strongest after day one in that test match, but eventually succumbed to what really was South African dominance after day one and uh, lost by an innings and 45 runs. Venu's uh, not sure, so I guess when we review that, we can go into that into more detail. Uh, but obviously a bit controversial with some injuries as well in that one. Okay, let's then start off with uh, New Zealand and Pakistan. So obviously that's the one, the only one that went to five days. So it's fresh in our memories, I'm sure. Uh, Pakistan obviously with a very elusive task of uh, having to chase a 373, I think it was. And uh, obviously falling short, as I said. Uh, but at the time, obviously, uh, I said to you, Astrid, that I don't think Pakistan are going to play for the draw and they'd either have to really kind of go gung-ho and get the total um, or they'd get cleaned up early doors. Obviously, neither happened and they ran it close. Um, let's very then briefly touch upon that. So, Usher, what was your reaction uh, to Pakistan's performance? Right, first things first, this is the best batting Pakistan has done in a very long time. They've tried to save this test match and they got this close, four and a half overs or three and a half overs to, to that point. Um, my live reactions are on Cricket For Us 2.0. Just thought I'd plug that in. But all in all, I think the best part was that partnership between Fawad Alim and Mohammed Rizwan. On the ninth ball of the day, Azhar Ali got out. And then it was both of those guys for like 60 overs. They batted together. Uh, of a partnership of 165, right? They played till after tea from after that, and uh, not the initial nine balls or ball in, in the morning session. And it's just brilliant. Like, honestly, the way Pakistan batted, the fight, the resilience, the, the, oh, you know what I mean, right? <laughs> it just was just brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the oh, they yeah. showed, right? That's the beauty of Test cricket. And they showed that they held in there when Pakistan lost wickets. None, none of the batsmen, barring Yasser Shah, everyone tried to stay there. They tried to uh, sh uh, show some sort of grit and stick at the crease. And uh, I think uh, you mentioned once, Fazan, that the last three batsmen played over 80 deliveries, right? Which is just amazing, which is great, which is 13 overs or something like that. So Pakistan showed some fight. And with this type of form, I was just really ex excited. I, at one point, I thought Pakistan could have won especially when Rizwan and Fawad Alam were batting. But as soon as that Rizwan wicket fell, uh, it seemed like Pakistan were just like, OK, yeah, we have to play for the draw. We can't win this anymore. Yeah, 20, 240, sorry, even for uh, for four. Uh, Pakistan with Rizwan and Fawad Alam are on, uh, you know, 100. Uh, sorry, Fawad Alam was in his, uh, well, probably in 80s, I think, and Rizwan was uh, 50 plus, I think. So, no, Fawad Alam, sorry, I'm, I'm wrong. He was on 100. And um, Mohamed Azwan was, uh, yeah, 50-odd. So, yeah, both of them obviously set and looked like Pakistan. I don't know if they would have gone on to win it if they both stayed in, but I think we would have definitely run them close. And we would have got the draw, I think, for sure. But obviously, it wasn't to be. Uh, Venu, as a neutral, because obviously we're kind of going on a little bit about Pakistan's batting, but inevitably they lost. So it was a lost cause in the end. Uh, I think it was an impressive day five display, but 
uh, four days of just pretty mediocre cricket from Pakistan and New Zealand being too good, do you think? Yeah, I agree. I think, um, yeah, they, I think they, they left it quite late, to be honest, in terms of, um, you know, how well they played. You know, if they did hard, you know, if they played better earlier on, maybe um, getting New Zealand out during the first innings a bit cheaper. Um, I think, you know, it could have been a different story, but the fight they showed was excellent, especially forward alarm and Mahindra Rizwan. And, you know, at one point they were four for 240 and, you know, not too far away. So at that point, as you both said, you know, the victory was a possibility, but um, you have to credit New Zealand for sticking in there. Um, Jameson getting the key wicket of um, um, Harold Rizwan. And then soon after, um, Wagner got um, got um, Fawad Alam um, caught um, by the wicketkeeper. And we have to note that um, Neil Wagner was, had um, two broken toes. He was um, on, um, he had some injections to, um, so he can overcome the pain. And that just shows how much heart Neil Wagner has. And um, he was he was bowling a lot of short deliveries to the batsman. And um, yeah, I thought he bowled his heart out. And and it's, and to be honest, it was a team effort by New Zealand. Um, two wickets from their bowlers. So two wickets each from the bowlers of Salvi, Bolt, Jameson, Wagner, Santner, all got two wickets each. So I think it's one of the best bowling attacks going around at the moment. So And yes, you, you may argue they maybe left it a bit too late. Maybe they should have um, wrapped the game up earlier, but, you know, they still won. And yes, they, yes, they left it a bit too late, but, you know, a quality um, display from New Zealand and an excellent fight from Pakistan, which was really nice to see as a neutral. And I'm, I was glad that I was up at um, 4.35 watching the last hour or so because it was really interesting. Yeah, no, I agree. A uh, proper test cricket, wasn't it? Um, very closely contested and a good battle between bat and ball. Uh, Fahad Alam will be a bit disappointed to get out the way he did, uh, kind of just tickling around the corner um, from Neil Wagner, which was a pretty loose delivery. And um, obviously, you know, it is what it is, though. I can't look too much into the past. I'm sure he'll forget that, brush it off, and then uh, go with confidence after scoring 100 as well. And as I said, yeah, uh, Usher made a good point about the 80 deliveries. Uh, also, guys, as well, uh, myself, uh, well, on Usher's channel, Cricket for Us 2.0, we did uh, do day four, day five, sorry, even review. Uh, as you probably have noticed, we've alternated the Pakistan New Zealand test match. Uh, so we uh, did uh, a review on that. Uh, so we touched upon some of these points, but some more as well, and also uh, just touched upon the test match as a whole. Um, Okay, I just want to get then. Yeah, go on, buddy. Um, I was just going to ask. You know, we we did our the awards for twenty twenty for the year, and we did the you know the we did the test moment of the year. Would you two put this test match or Pakistan's fight back as your moment of the year? If if let's say we did the awards, let's say today or tomorrow. If we'd I actually would... no, if we'd got a draw, I would have said yes. But I think the fact that we lost. Even though it was it was such an amazing, it's such an amazing fight, I think, uh, and attitude. But look, I mean, no one remembers a loser. I'm going to be honest with you, but I'll remember it now. But I know Usher's Usher just probably disagrees with me. But in, in a couple of years' time, I'll forget about it because we lost the match. I'll remember. Oh, we might have ran close, but I won't remember yeah. it being an but, incredible feat because we didn't we didn't actually get anything from it. At the end of the day, it's still one nil to New Zealand, and I, I don't want to get into. I don't want as Pakistanis, and also I think as cricket fans, people need to be careful to get into the mindset of thinking, oh, well, we got close. So that's that's good enough. Like, I think Pakistan will say, okay, we did well to get back, but we could have done a lot better. And if we'd, if we'd done better in the other days, even for parts of sessions, we probably could have easily got draw. So then let's take the positive from that, but say, okay, that probably wasn't good enough overall. And say let's play how we played in day five and do that for a whole test match and the second test and then we can actually uh, you know see where we're at and i'm sure we can be competitive that's what i would take from it anyway personally um quickly actually yeah what's your take on it because i think when he's interested yeah well i i'd say i wouldn't think pakistan would be happy with it i think pakistan would just understand and realize exactly what you said that the way they played on day five that's what they need to do for the entire bit for me i would put it as the test moment mainly because of 
the character that I saw just in that entire day. It's not just the Pakistan fight back. It's the fact that Shaheen got hit on the head, right? It looked like he was concussed and he stayed out there. Wagner has two broken toes and he was still bowling 11 overs on the trot after T, right? It's just stuff like that that just got me completely riled up into it. So I would have put it in my test moment because I just love that entire scenario. Maybe it's because it's the freshest thing in my head as well, but I'd probably put that uh, on there. But again, we haven't done it now. We did it a couple of days ago, so it doesn't count, does it? Yeah, um, I, I would assume that we probably would get out, out voted. I mean, I wouldn't have voted for it anyway, so I think we might have had maybe two, three people do it, but go on, Manu. Ashton, you know, if you, if you were to do a 2021 um, award, I think we could, we, we could include this test match because it wasn't in the qualification period. Yeah. It yeah. Not we, we, yeah. We can do from the 29th of uh, December to, uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> to whenever uh, we do the next one. So I'm sure we can include it. But by that time, I'm sure I would have forgotten about it. <laughs> we'll see. We'll <laughs> see. But I'm pretty sure we would have. Let's see. Okay, let's um, then move on to uh, the Australia-India test match, unless you guys have anything else you want to touch upon this one. Uh, either of you? Um, no, I think Asha made a good point about, I think, which as a neutral, you know, Pakistan, you know, as a test side, have days, the moments of brilliance, they'll have session of brilliance. And I think in England series, they had a couple of sessions. I think Shad Masood had an, had an excellent 100. And I think um, Asha made a good point that, you know, they are brilliant in, 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 in spots, in bursts, but they're not consistent throughout each throughout the five days and that's something they need to work on I, I think yep 100% uh, obviously some positives um, Mohamed has won 50s and both things etc um, I think let's go through the other two test matches and then I want to kind of ask you guys about who you think is the best uh, well who performed best with the bat in all three test matches uh, who performed best best with the ball in terms of a player and then maybe a couple of uh, surprise um, categories. I, I like my categories recently, don't I? Little awards that we're giving out. I, mean, I think I've got that from you, Vanu. So uh, good influence you've uh, put on me. Okay, let's go to Australia versus India then. So as I said, India winning by eight wickets um, and a very convincing win in the end. Obviously a very, very good 100 by uh, Ajinka Rahane in the first innings. And... Uh, Standing captain came in and obviously delivered after, as Venu said, he made up for that uh, run out of Virat Kohli in the first test. Okay, um, all three of us, when we did the preview for this match, uh, backed Australia. Now, obviously, they've underperformed, but I think India have also, maybe not overperformed, but they performed probably to close to the best of their ability, I would say. Um, a big surprise... Uh, Venny? Um, not really a surprise. I think I did I did say I was sure they would win this test match, my prediction, but I did. I think I made a point that don't write India off because you know there are some excellent players in that team. Um, but I think they've clearly got a plan to um, neutralise um, you know, how um, the impact Steve Smith can have. And that's really has really really brought up the issues in Australian batting um, batting lineup so that India have played some clever cricket and exposed that so yeah not really a surprise and, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the series because I think it's going to be a close one it could go um, either way yeah I think Australia will be disappointed with the performance especially with the bat as you said um, just because I just feel uh, that the batsmen have not looked in Nick. I don't think a single batsman really has looked uh, like he's in form. Minus Labuschagne, obviously, again, got 48, one of the not innings. In there. But again, even him oh, you know, hasn't got a 50 plus score and it doesn't look like he's free flowing um, apart. From, but then on the other, other side, another scale, you've got Ajinka Rahane. So let's touch upon him. Um, Ashtud, uh, do you want to? quickly talk about that 100 because I think it was a very, very impressive 100 uh, from him. Oh, definitely. Because this is the thing, right? He came into this match having ran the previous captain out, right? They were fairly quick wickets. I'm not going to say they were super quick, but they were fairly quick. I think uh, Agarwal got a duck and uh, Pajara got 17 or something. So after that point, he needed to steady the shape with Shuman Gill, whose debut it was, right? And the way both of them batted together, it was great. Shuman Gill got out and then he had a fantastic partnership with, uh, I think, Vihari, then 
uh, Rishabh Pant, then Ravi Jadeja, which was the bigger, uh, biggest one out of out of the lot. And the way he batted was a proper captain's knock. Like this is, uh, and again, we're going to touch on best batsman and whatever. But I think this was such a good innings. The way he planned out what he was supposed to do and what every other batsman needed to do. Yes, um, it might look like oh he wasn't going at a very quick pace initially. He didn't need to. He just needed to stay there and steady the ship, and that's exactly what he did. Um, one thing I was really impressed with was the way he ran apart from the way, apart from how it ended. But barring that, the way he that ran. That was Jadeja's fault, to be fair. So you, you can't blame him. <laughs> this is the first time Rahane has been run out uh, in Test cricket, right? Mm. Since since he debuted. So th- like yeah, he just runs other like, people out. It's fine. Jadeja yeah, does that's the well. Do you know Jadeja's never been run out? He just runs off. No, I'm joking. I don't know. That's, that's not an official stat, so take it back. But um, no, yeah, Jadeja's, uh, I just, he's like a serial run out, um, run out artist he is. But yeah, God, sorry, I should have interrupted and carry on. That's fine. So yeah, all in all, uh, Ajinka Rahane just batted the way that he needed to. He was the one that I was thinking needed to step up in this match, and he stepped up and performed and showed everyone that, yeah, I'm, I am still as good as... Uh, you know, I was uh, three, four years ago. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think obviously in that first innings, um, I talked to Venny about it that you know Australia had India at sixty-four for three um, in that first innings, and then obviously there was that big partnership between. Well, there was, there was a smaller but you no know, fifty-odd partnership between Rahane and Vahari, and then after that, obviously. You know, he just batted with everyone, Rahani, and then including that huge Jadeja partnership and uh, got them to a very, very good total of 326, which, uh, judging by Australia's scores of 195 and 200, obviously it was a very, very good score in the end. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously we can talk about this because it's been announced. So Joe Burns has been dropped and uh, Pukowski and David Warner returning for. Um, well, I'm assuming that they're fit enough, otherwise they won't be including the squad. So I'm guessing those two are going to open up, or at least one will. I'm assuming both because they're one left-hand, right-hand. And obviously Matthew Wade is left-hand and David Warner will definitely play. Uh, so two new openers for that third test match. David Warner's experience, obviously Bukowski, not, I think he would be making his debut, uh, unless I'm mistaken. Uh, but similar to Shubman Gill, a lot of hype around him, and we saw that he did quite a good job. Uh, well, very good job for his debut anyway. Uh, I want to get your opinion on one Joe Burns uh, being dropped, and are you surprised? And two, uh, these two inclusions now, David Warner and Pukowski, is it going to shore up Australia's batting? And then are we going to now see the best in Labuschagne and Smith? Because I, I've said this before that I think they need some runs on the board to be more comfortable to then express themselves. I think you know, they struggle when they've got not many runs on the board and they're not uh, Pakistani players who are used to being, you know, zero for two. Um, that's not a usual thing that they're used to. Uh, so quickly with you, Venu, what's your opinion on that? I think it's the right move. They, they, the batting's the weakness at the moment. They're, no, their bowling attacks is fine, but they, they need, the bowlers need some runs on the board. Um, so, yeah, I think if Warner is fit, he will open and um, maybe Wade will go down in the middle order to strengthen the middle order, maybe um, at the expense of Travis Head. And uh, maybe you could get Will um, Pukowski playing as well. Um, I think maybe they've been um, inspired by India's selection of Shubman Gill. And maybe they think, you know, it's time for some young, um, play some young, um, some young blood in um, Will Pukowski because I think Joe Burns is getting on a bit as well. And... I think there is a, um, you know, there is, and they need to think about, you know, how can we develop our younger players and develop, you know, players that can, you know, be in our team for the next 10 years. They were doing that with Cameron Green. And um, if they think Will Pukowski is the next big thing, you know, why not um, give him a go? So I think it's the right move from Australia. Unfortunately, on Burns, considering he has, he did hit a 50 in the during the first um, test match. However, you know, I think, you know, just one score of 50 and didn't have many scores beforehand, I think probably the right move. And hopefully Warner will play because we know how good Warner can be and strengthen that Australian batting lineup. Yeah, no, 100%. Uh, let's touch upon uh, Cameron Green and Shubman Gill then, actually. 
because Cameron Green, I thought, looked quite good for that 45 um, until he got out. Um, both t- I've seen two dismissals now where he's got out uh, with the pull shot, which someone of his size and stature, you think he's going to absolutely spank that to the boundary, but he just seems to get caught, and I think he just times it a bit early. Um, and, it, and normally... You know, that's you don't see that too often uh, with someone of his size, but he um, still looked pretty good for that 45. And obviously, Shaman Gill hit 45 in the first innings and then uh, a good not out of uh, 35 in the second at a very good strike rate as well to see them home. Uh, what's your opinion on uh, those two young ones? I know we've touched upon that a little bit in other videos as well, Ashton, but just very briefly, your um, opinion on Cameron Green and Shaman Gill, because Cameron Green also bowls and bowls pretty well as well. Yeah. Uh, I'll start off with Shaman Gill. I have been very impressed. Um, I, I liked him in the domestic uh, format. I liked him in the IPL. I've liked him here as well. Um, he batted quick, which is exactly what he needed to if he was batting with someone like Pajara because Pajara was like, stop, 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 stop. So Shaman Gill had to get the runs going. Um, I think he is a lot mature than, uh, a lot more mature than Prithvi Shaw, who is around the same age uh, in, as a batsman. I think uh, what Shuman Gill did just uh, made me enjoy his batting a lot more as well. So uh, I think he is one of the players that I'm looking forward to in the next. And hopefully he keeps in form in some sort of way. But I want to uh, see him as one of the best openers in the world in the next few years. Uh, because he's definitely got, it looks like he has that caliber in him. In terms of Cameron Green, that guy can bowl 140, 142 kilometers per hour. right? And he can bat. That 45 innings just showed uh, his character completely, didn't it? It's just like he knew that I'm the last stand. I need to stay here and just play with the tail. And one thing Australia does do a lot better than India is that their tail wags and India's just doesn't. So Pat Cummins batted with him for a while. Then I know Stark went quite quickly, but Lyon, Hazelwood, everyone tried to stay with him a bit. But I, I, I like the way he bats. Um, I think he's got a couple of hundreds in the Sheffield Shield this year. Uh, and he took a fiver in, in in this year's Sheffield Shield. So I think that was one of the big things because Australia has been looking for uh, a pace bowling all-rounder for a while. And this is probably Ben Stokes 10 years ago or something like that, the way I saw it. Because I remember when Ben Stokes first started, he wasn't that good. So, But he is a lot better from, from, my, uh, from my perspective. And I think I have been very impressed with his bowling, his batting. Only that last innings, I think he impressed me. Otherwise, yeah, he's got an out using the pull shot when he's like six foot five or six foot six, which, do- which doesn't make sense, does it? Because it's not coming up here. It's like down here and he's still trying to uh, heave it over mid wicket or something and just uh, times it, uh, but just miscues it a bit. So yeah, great, uh, great prospects for the future. Yeah, worth noting that I think obviously Ben Stokes is an absolute gun of a player. I think, uh, you know, obviously he's so good now in test cricket, but Cameron Green, I think bowls almost as quick as him now. Um, so he's got the pace there, but and he's got the ability. I think he is someone that if he doesn't get injured and uh, they develop him correctly, that which I'm sure Australia will, um, he's he will be a superstar. And Renu uh, pointed him out to me a few months back and said, look, this is one to watch out for. I think he is. Okay, let's uh, go on to the final test match because we'll touch upon all three again um, at the end. Uh, so, South Africa versus Sri Lanka. So, South Africa winning by innings and 45 runs in this one. Uh, doesn't quite tell the whole story, I'm sure Vanny will tell me, and uh, probably rightly so as well. Okay, after the first day, Sri Lanka hit 396. And I think we're thinking Sri Lanka doing a good job here. They're the highest ever total... Um, in South Africa, as uh, Vernie rightly pointed out to me, and a very impressive, um, I thought, display by uh, Dan Andrea De Silva, Dinesh Chandamal, uh, Dustin Shanaka, a very good and brief knock, sorry, a brisk knock, any, even from him. Uh, but then after that, really, it was all South Africa with uh, Dean Algar uh, hitting 95, Mark from 68, and obviously 5 2 plus C, that 199, and Bavuma, that 71, which I don't know if you guys have seen, but uh, I watched it again and I just couldn't believe that he walked off after not hitting the ball. Um, so he basically went to drive um, a kind of uppish delivery and there's a gap between bat and ball and uh, he didn't actually wait. He just walked off, uh, which obviously means that he thought he'd hit it. But then when you see the replay, there's nothing on Snicko. There's a clear gap between bat and pad. Sorry, uh, 
bat and ball and uh, it was a really weird one that he didn't review and as a batsman I was just I just watched it again thinking what's he doing <laughs> uh, because he would have been on for 100 maybe potentially as well I think I think he just got bored um just um, playing that attack it's like <laughs> no, no i don't I've think enough. Okay. well maharaj didn't get bored he hit 73 didn't he as well which um and uh, who was it i think it it was rummy's raja usher's favorite said um that when maharaj hit a cover drive for four he said that's a vintage maharaj and i said and i was thinking to myself that is a mo- that's the biggest load of bs i've ever heard because maharaj is not known for his batting he's a bowler you can bat a little bit and I'm pretty sure he's not a great batsman that isn't known for his cover drives. But thank you for that, Rummies Raja. I'm sure the Sri Lankan fans love you. Um, anyway, so let's quickly then touch upon it. Venu, as a Sri Lankan fan, do you want to give me your speed on this? Because I know you've got a lot of talking points. After day one, you know, it was, uh, you know, I'm really pleased with Sri Lanka's effort. Out of all the six teams, you say Sri Lanka were at the strongest um, position after day one. Then, unfortunately, Dan and Jada got uh, the silver got injured, um, so he w- w- couldn't take part. And then um, one the bowler um, Dasan uh, Rajifa, sorry, Kasan Rajifa, only bowled two point one overs, and um, you know had to go off the field of injuries. So you're two players down already. You have a depleted um, attack. I think um, there were other injuries as well throughout um, that uh, innings. But not to take anything away from South Africa, I thought. The inning, the injuries played a big part in this result. Um, sure, South Africa played well. Sure, Fatu Plessy played well. But I think something has to be said about having substitutions in cricket, especially Sri Lanka did not get a single tour match beforehand. So you're asking players to obviously travel from Sri Lanka to South Africa, stay in a bubble, which is basically stay in a hotel, and then go straight into doing a shift bowling 10 overs, 15 overs in a row, and surely injuries are going to happen. And I think something has to be um, um, said. Um, something has to talk about. IC has to talk about this. And look, if this happened the way around, if South Africa had a depleted bowling attack, I will also be making the same point. So um, it's not just because I'm a Sri Lankan fan and disappointed about the result. I think that's something that has to be said because in football, it's not the same if you have... Uh, nine um, players against 11 players. It's just not the same. Although it does make it a bit interesting, but in cricket, it just it just, it just doesn't work. Having, you know, one or two bowlers down. Yeah, and it's just, yeah. However, South Africa did well. And you know, they did well to uh, clean up uh, Sri Lanka in the second innings. Quite disappointing how there was a bit of a collapse near the end, um, especially after Cusper Pereira got out. Um, but, um, yeah. Just, just a disappointing end, really, and it didn't go into day five. Disappointing. Yeah. Thing is, if you want to, uh, if guys watching, if you want to hear more of an in-depth discussion on uh, subs in terms of uh, injury subs, check out Venu's uh, segment because we, myself and Venu, uh, talked about it in depth about uh, well, what how we think it would work and also why we think it should be introduced. Uh, injury substitution so it's on uh, Venu's uh, cricket catch up number four uh, which we released a few days back so check that out as well um, sorry for plugging it Venu but I thought it was important because it is a good discussion go on, yeah, and just to add if you want test cricket to be more of a spectacle more of a um, more interesting surely having substitutions will ensure that happens um, because as soon as uh, Sri Lanka had to plead to pace a uh, bowling attack. The test match was kind of, you know, you knew South Africa were going to win it. It kind of took away the, uh, from the spectacle and it took away what could have been if substitutions were allowed. Yeah, 100%. Okay, let's then go into, um, first of all, Ashtad, Faf du Plessis, uh, 199. How good was that knock? Bearing in mind, yes, Sri Lanka's attack wasn't at full strength. It was still really good. Um, one thing that I, rem- uh, I I recall from when he was batting was the fact that he hit like a lot of deliveries he'd hit that I would have thought, oh, he's going to defend that. But then he just time it so well that it would go for four. It's just the timing in his shots were brilliant. Uh, I know he didn't uh, do amazingly well when uh, it was in the T20 series against England. He didn't have 
a brilliant time. I think one of the games he scored, he's a moment, but he just came into this game and just looked like he was in full flow. And thankfully, he did get partners such as Bavuma and uh, Vintage Maharaj, obviously, uh, coming in uh, to, uh, to help him out a bit. But I, I actually really like Dean Elgar's innings as well, because I thought the start that uh, is it Markram and Elgar gave to South Africa is something that everyone prior to the game was talking about, because Markram has had a, a career of two halves. One was amazing, and the second half, he's been not so good. And this kind of just showed that, okay, he is still good enough. And I don't know what the number was in terms of how big that partnership was, but that kind of gave them a good uh, platform for someone like when Fab Duplessis came in, it gave him a good platform that he can take his time if he needs to, but he can still bash the ball if, if he needed to. Uh, I, I just enjoyed that innings a lot. And it was really, really disheartening the way he got out though, because that was one of the worst shots he hit. It was the worst shot that I saw him hit in that entire innings, right? And he's at 199. What's he doing? He's like worse than Dawood Milan. At least Dawood Milan took a single, right? He didn't get out. Could it? Oh, goodness. It just made me feel really bad. You could see the disappointment in everyone in uh, the South African dugout space that, oh, he didn't get a 200. Because I was like, yeah, he's going to get a 200. That's going to be great. Double century. That'll be nice to watch. And then he comes out with just not a good shot. Just not a good shot at all. Yeah, so uh, that partnership just firstly uh, between Markram and uh, Dean Elgar was 141 stand uh, for the first wicket. It's really impressive. Yeah, Faf Tuplessi obviously hit, what was it? It was basically trying to hit over mid on uh, from Hasaranga, the spinner, and uh, completely miscued it. I didn't really need to do that. Could have just hit straight down the ground as he was doing on the floor, and uh, he would have picked up a single, could have just... Yeah, needed it either side and he would have been fine. Uh, but obviously, sometimes when you're in that, on that score or you're you're batting that well, you just think, oh, it's going to come off because everything else has. Um, also, something I wanted to point out, which I don't know if uh, you guys noticed, that um, Sri Lanka almost had a backstop for uh, some of that innings, in uh, which is something that you don't normally see, and you normally see that in children's cricket. But the reason, or, well, when you're playing in the park or something, but the reason why is because I think it was Bavuma uh, was uh, playing almost paddles over the keeper, etc., and uh, uppercuts, etc. So they end up using. They nearly got him out like that actually as well, um, well by putting someone there. But he wasn't quite in the right place. But I thought that was quite an interesting uh, tactical point. But Kanaratne is quite a good captain in terms of being uh, open to changes. So that was quite good. Okay, then let's uh, briefly then discuss the second innings from Sri Lanka. Obviously, as Venu pointed out, Kusal Pereira looked really good for a 64, and then unfortunately fell to Nokia after review. Um, but look, I mean, not really too much to talk about uh, in terms of batting. But before I go on to the kind of bad batting display from Sri Lanka, Hasaranga looked really good. Vanu, 59 or 53, um, strike rate of 110. And um, obviously, he picked up four wickets and put in a big, big shift um, early doors of uh, 40, 45 overs, I think it was, uh, in that first innings. Then to come out and hit 59 on his debut was pretty impressive. And to be honest, there were some really good strikes in there, some really good. Uh, drives through the on offside even sorry uh, off drives and also cover drives and uh, played the spinners uh, of Maharaj well as well and um, what do you think of that knock Venu? Yeah, I thought it was an excellent um, knock given the circumstances um, I think you know because of the circumstance he was he had a license to kind of hit you know hit at a higher strike rate I think and um, I'm looking forward to seeing Hasaranga develop into uh, you know more accomplished uh, cricketer in all three formats you know he's an all-rounder and, uh, you know, as you said, Fizan getting those four wickets in the first innings, he put a shift in with his, um, I think, the, his leg break, got some uh, good wickets as well. Uh, completely got the cock, completely fooled him uh, with a googly. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to um, seeing him play over the next the year. Or so I think he's the play to watch for Sri Lanka going forward. Yeah. The, 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 sorry, sorry to interrupt. Just, oh. There's a couple of players. So Shanaka and Hasaranga both played in the LPL. So when I saw them in the LPL, they both impressed a lot. And what they did here was something similar. In the first innings, it was uh, Shanaka who got 60-odd, right? And in the second innings, Hasaranga batted very well. But as you correctly pointed out, he bowled very well as well. So both of these, uh, I'm going to say young because I don't know how old they are, but I'm assuming because they're inexperienced, I'm going to say young. But because of the, both of these young players are basically all-rounders, they can bat and bowl at a good, at a good uh, level. And uh, it's, it's great to see 
uh, Sri Lanka getting players like that because they can't, and I'm sorry to say this, Venu, but they can't just depend on Angela Matthews and uh, Sar Pereira forever. So I think they, they need some players like this for sure. Yeah, it's good. I think uh, obviously some positives uh, in terms of Chandamar and also uh, Shanaka and Delende de Silva as well. Uh, disappointing, I think Kusal Mendes was a big disappointment for me in this. Uh, got out for a duck in the second innings as well. And he, he's obviously the number three and he's supposed to be the guy who is the big gun but didn't perform. Hasaranga looks really good. Um, I said this to you, Venu, I think he's a very good leg spin bowler and has, but he's not a big turner of the ball. Has a very good, good, good googly, sorry, even. A very good googly, but. Um, just not, I, I feel like it just doesn't quite go through his action or like he could get a lot more revs on the ball. I'm, I'm sure that's something he might work on, but uh, just to develop a bit more of a, of a bigger leg break uh, stock delivery, which I'm sure uh, they'll work on because he's shorter as well. So he needs to kind of use his body to get around. He doesn't have the height where he's going to get a lot of bounce. So he needs to develop overspin like Nathan Lyon does um, as a spinner as well. But anyway, okay, let's... Um, Apart from that pretty poor batting venue from Sri Lanka in that second innings, just poor application? Yeah, poor application. They needed to, I think, do what Pakistan did today against New Zealand, kind of dig in. Um, bats just um, frustrated the South African pace um, bowlers. Um, yeah, and they didn't really do that. And some tame dismissals, but some, fair, but some good bowling from South Africa. So well done to them. And yeah, it was a, quite a... Quite a all round a well done display, a good display from South Africa. Yeah, but I'm sure the uh, second test match will be well more closely contested. I'm sure, um, hopefully, with no injuries. Um, I'm sure it will be. There's a couple of I don't know whether Danje de Silva and a few others, Rajita, etc. I think he came out to bat, so I'm hoping that uh, that Sri Lanka, um, a lot of the injuries that they did pick up, uh, some players will at least be available. And Mickey Arthur won't be batting at four, like he said after. Um, <laughs> okay, let's. Um, unless you guys have anything, they, they, to touch they wouldn't mind Grant Flower at three, though. Yeah, he's, he's pretty. Yeah, he's not bad. Not bad. No, I was thinking if if they had Kuma Sankara like um, commentating or something, and they had. I don't know if it's allowed. Imagine <laughs> not part of the squad. <laughs> yeah, but oh, yeah, that's true. I think you can. I think you can. <laughs> You have to, but he has to be reg- he has to get registered. There must be some type of admin or administration they have to do beforehand. Because I, I know in Australia there was I'll just uh, have I a remember. ringer because you can't do I, it, you can't do it in club cricket. <laughs> I'm pretty sure in Australia, or maybe it was because it was uh, you know uh, what do you call it limited overs and it was in Australia. That's why because I remember Brad Hogg was commentating at the start of the season or the start of a test series or a T20 series, and by the last T20 he was playing. So <laughs> this just thought. Yeah, yeah, that's a weird one, isn't it? Okay, um, anything else you want to touch on this test match before we do our kind of players of, of the whole boxing? Test? Bit of a letdown, wasn't it? Bit disappointing, but that's cricket for you. Yeah, turns around, as you said, Pakistan were in the worst position, Sri Lanka in the best, and then obviously by the end, it kind of didn't quite switch around because Pakistan didn't get anything from it, but they it were in more of positive spirits, let's say, than Sri Lanka would be, um, which probably were, I guess, the most negative spirits after that. They'll probably feel a bit, little bit down and trodden after the injuries as well, which is a bit unfortunate uh, for them. Okay, let's then go on to uh, who we think. Let's go bowler first because we always talk about batsmen. Who do you guys think was the bowler of these uh, Boxing Day tests. So obviously one bowler from uh, all three matches. Um, so it can be anyone you want. Yeah. Let's go with, uh, let's go with Venny first. What's your pick? It was a difficult one. I'm, it had, well, the f- one bowler that comes to mind is Neil Wagner. The fact that he was bowling with two fractured toes and, you know, he put a shift in and he got and the key breakthrough to break the um, wrist one. Alam partnership. Um, no, he didn't break it. No, he didn't. He got and fouled Alam out, which was the key wicket. Um, I've, it's either him or um, Ashwin of, of India. The fact that he's you know got the key wicket of um, Smith in the first innings, and I think he also got him again in the second innings. If I'm, no, he didn't. Bumrah got him, but he got Labuschagne in the second innings. So I'm gonna go for. Uh, has to be Neil Wagner. The fact that he had, he didn't go off, and he both with the pain, 
yeah, has to be him. He he yeah, he seems to always you know give it his best, and uh, he seems to be a you know he, he's a bowler that you want in your team, and he seems to be a team player. Seems to be a has a nice character about him, and yeah, has Mill Wagner for me. Okay, I'm just looking at it now. Actually, I've got four in mind: Carl Jameson, um, who obviously got Riz one, and I think he got one more wicket than Neil Wagner. Obviously, he didn't have a broken toe, so I can see why Vernon's gone for that. Um, Neil Wagner's another um, Bumrah, and also Ashwin, as Vernon mentioned. I'm looking at uh, Pakistan. I, I think obviously Shaheen Afridi bowled really well in the first innings, but Nasim Shah bowled better in the second, and uh, I don't think Shaheen picked up a wicket in the second innings. And uh, for South Africa. Uh, who was it? So Pomlevold got four for, but to be honest with you, that, that's a bit misleading because he cleaned up the tail and uh, bowled really poorly at the start. But Mulder bowled quite well in both innings, picked up three in the first innings and two in the second. Uh, so I guess that's another one you could chuck in there. Uh, Ashid, who have you gone with? Oh, I, I think I mentioned this earlier today. I'm, I'm probably, I completely understand why Ben was gone with Wagner, but I'll probably say Jameson or Ashwin, uh, to be honest. Jameson bowled 26 maidens out of 49 overs he bowled in the match, right? Exactly. 26 maidens. He took uh, four or five weeks. I think he took five weeks. He took three in the first one and then uh, two in the second innings. So he, he took that key wicket of Rizwan as well. Uh, so him, but also Ashwin, because Ashwin's just a, a, a beast, I'm telling you. Like, he's, uh, I think he took five wickets as well. Uh, Bumrah took six in the match. However, Bumra did clean up the tail in, in the first inning. So I would go probably Ashwin. The way Ashwin was used by Rahane was brilliant. Therefore, I might... Mm, th it's tough. It's probably Jameson or Ashwin for me as well. Uh, well, I think he said Wagner or Ashwin. But, you know, mm. Ashwin's in both of ours. Has, has, uh, has Asha convinced you at all, Benny? You sticking with Wagner? Um, considering Asha also put up, uh, made a case for Ashwin, I think I'll go with Ashwin, actually. Um Okay, that's fine. We can go with Ashwin. So Ravi Ashwin, I think, is our bowler um, of the Boxing Day test. Let's go batsman then. Um, off the top of my head, there's a few. Um, Faf Dublessi, obviously, that 199. Rahane hit 100 in the first innings, a very good 100. Um, and then obviously got a knot out, or I think 20-odd in the second. Uh, Williamson hit 129. Uh, in the first innings for New Zealand and Fawad Alam hit 100 in the second innings for Pakistan but you also have Rizwan who hit 50s in both innings as well to be fair so there's there's a lot uh, to get through so I'm not sure uh, okay Vanny do you want to go first again? I, I've, I've got to go for Fawad, Fawad Alam because the fact that his last test century was in 2009 and I think that was the last time he played uh, uh, a test match was in 2000 well he played, obviously, he's had five yeah. innings in 2020 and he had six innings in 2009. And, yeah, just a complete turnaround in terms of, um, you know, had 11 year away from Test Cricket. And it was a fantastic knock. And um, really, at one point, Park, you could have, you know, there was a fair chance Parkinson could have pulled it off and even win the Test match. But, um, yeah, he he made the win and most probably the draw more possible for Pakistan today. And it was a fighting innings against probably one of the best attacks going right now in test cricket. And it was quality innings. He you know, played, he played a short ball really well. Yeah. Has to be a uh, forward Alam for me. And I'm a neutral. I'm not a Pakistan fan at all. So, um, yeah. At all? <laughs> but as in, they're not my number one team. Yeah. 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 I do like I do like um I do like watching play, but third alarm for me. No, I think that's I, the thing is it's difficult because you know sometimes when you look at a scorecard, uh, you can kind of get taken away from just the stats because um well, when you watch it live as you said, Vernon, and you know the type of pressure that batsmen are under. Well, it, I think you need to take into account the situation, as I'm trying to say. So I agree with that because, for example, someone like Williamson. Uh, he, which was a fantastic hundred. I can't. I'm not going to disagree with that. But obviously, he wasn't under much pressure, as much anyway as someone like Fodon, who was trying to fight. They were literally having to fight to save the Test match. Um, whereas, yeah, that one from uh, Williamson, that hundred, and the same with Faftu Blessi. I think they were already what 200 plus. Um, so yeah, it, it makes a big difference. Uh, what about for you, Ashen? Right. I'm trying to be objective here, right? So I'm trying to think not just 
one innings, I'm thinking of the entire, like, all three matches as a whole. And I might have to go with uh, Mohamed Rizwan. And the reason is because he was consistent in both innings. That's, that's, that's a big thing for me. And uh, he came in at 52 for five in the first innings and scored a 50. Then he came in at 75 or something like that for four in the second innings and uh, kind of helped uh, develop that partnership. So in both cases, in both innings, he didn't get the highest score, but the way he batted in both innings kind of just got me, honestly. Like, uh, I know what Venu's saying exactly, and the numbers do kind of sometimes skew things. And like, first thing I thought, oh yeah, Duplessis, obviously. But then when you start thinking about it, it you add the pressure onto you, add everything else, and it comes out that, personally, I think Fawad Alam batted very well in the second innings. He batted okay in the first. He only scored nine of like 40, 50 deliveries, right? But I think the one good thing for me was that Rizwan performed in both cases. He was the man in a man of crisis for Pakistan, and uh, it's hard hard to argue with that. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. I think I'm more inclined. I don't know. They're both Pakistanis. I'm happy with either. Uh, to be honest with you, <laughs> for sure, I'm happy with either. So, anyway, as uh, as I should have said, obviously he's gone with uh, Mohammed Rizwan and uh, Venu. You with Fahad Alam. I'm I'm happy can with I, either. To be honest, so can I can I can I also make a case for another batsman, uh, yeah. Jinka Rahane? Yeah, I was going to say that. That's why I mentioned him. Because- the fact that, you know, it was a, we always say a captain's knock. I think this was more of a captain's knock than Kane Williamson's captain's knock because, yeah, the, the, in a serious context, they're 1 0 down after, you know, a, an embarrassing 36 all out. Yeah. And, you know, they, you know, he came in, Rahani came in when um, India were two for 61 and Pujara soon, you know, Pujara, who got 600 plus runs the last time they were in, uh, down in Australia. Mm hmm. Um, so their main run getter in Australia was out cheaply, and it was three for sixty-four. And yeah, then he had a good partnership with Hari, and uh, decent one with Pan, and then you know, and uh, a, a good one with the D- D- Deja. And and I thought he was a captain very well as well. I think there's a case has to be made for Rahani as well. So I'm not too sure what to pick now. I, I think so. Rizwan obviously was cap- standing captain as well. So I think they're both... So let, let's maybe then go with... Uh, we can go join even as well. But I think Rizwan or Rahani, I think maybe because Fahad Alam wasn't... Uh, he only performed in one innings. Rahani got a not out anyway in the second. And both were standing captains and both, I think, did good jobs and had captains knocks. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm a little bit biased. So I'll, I'll look towards Rizwan, but I'm happy to go mm-hmm. Rahani as well. To be honest, yeah, I was going to say, I, I, I'm happy to concede to Rahane because I forgot that he was not out and he came in in that second innings as well. Because for lack of a better term, India lost two quick wickets around the 40 run mark, right? Uh, or whatever it was, I can't remember the number. But basically, India lost two quick wickets. And if Rahane did something like he did last, last week in that first test, India might have been 60 all out, you know what I mean? So he stayed in there. So yeah, I'm happy to uh, change my opinion to Rahane. Because, yeah, that makes complete sense. Okay. But we're going to go Rizwan. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> we'll still go Rahane. It's fine. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so Ashram Bowler and Rahane Batsman. Um, dying inside, but it's fine. Okay, let's move on to... Uh, so I'm just joking. <laughs> Surprise package. Who's, who's the team of the week? No, it's fine. We, we, that's for Venu's cricket catch-up, Venu. I, I want to save it for that's your... That's India. We have, well, we'll see. Are there any, no, no matches will start, will it? Yeah, no. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll wait for uh, your catch-up to go through that. Pakistan starts on Sunday. So if you do the catch-up on Saturday, then that's fine. Oh, we'll be doing it on Sunday, I think. So that's perfect. Okay. Let's um, then do, I want to do one last one before we wrap up. A surprise package. So someone who's maybe impressed, um, who you maybe thought wouldn't, or has just impressed and you're just happy with how they've done Uh one player from all three test matches. So, Ashtar, do you want to go first? Ahim Ashraf. Did not yeah. expect him. <laughs> Did not think he was going to do anything, right? He bowled well in the first first innings, wicket to wicket, with the bat as well, scoring 91. In the second innings, fine, he didn't get too much of the ball, so I'm not going to base it on that. But even when he came into bat, he was 19 of 27 or 28 deliveries, and then he just got a delivery that he just moved his bat off enough and that kind of nicked it otherwise i think he played very well he he he, it looks like 
the training he's done with Muhammad Yusuf has really helped him develop as a as a player, and uh, not just with the bat but also with the ball. So I'm 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 putting my nominee in as uh, Fahim Ashraf. Okay, fair enough, Bunny. Um, I'll say uh, um, Hasaranga of Sri Lanka because uh, he got four wickets in uh, the first um, when he bowled. He put a, put a mammoth shift in. I think he bowled. He bowled um, 45 overs and four wickets. That's a, that, that's a shift. It's basically bowling the all of a ODI uh, match. But um, and also in the second innings, getting getting a decent 59, which included 12 fours and one six. So I'm going to go for Hasaranga because I haven't seen much of him. And yeah, it kind of surprised me the way he performed against Africa. Okay, should we just do a joint one? I don't really care who gets this one. I'm happy with both. I think they're both good. Hasaranga, I think, is very good. Um, I, I've been really impressed with him. And I, I wouldn't normally go to uh, Fahim Ashraf, but I think the 91, it just kind of came out of nowhere. And even though we've seen him before, like I've never seen him bat like that. So, I, I, of course, he batted well in one of the T20s, but Test Match Cricket is a whole different level, I think. Um, and so to bat like that was good. So happy to give it to both. Go on, Ashen. Another another suggestion, and I know this guy didn't take wickets, but it's uh, Keshav Maharaj. He mm. uh, he was a vintage batsman, Fazan. Like he scored so. so We're not giving it to Maharaj just because of Rami's Raja now. <laughs> no, just, but yeah, let's share it between Hasaranga and to Zafim Ashraf. So happy to give it to both. But yeah, Ma- Maharaj did bowl well as well. I thought he bowled quite well. And battered, obviously, uh, vintagely, apparently, according to uh, Ramiz Raja. Okay, anything else you guys want to touch on before we wrap up here? Okay, thank you very much. And guys, if you're watching and have stayed with us till the end, thanks very much for uh, for tuning in. Uh, please uh, check out Venus, as I've mentioned a couple of times, uh, Venus Weekly uh, Cricket Catch-Up, which is a segment that we do, of course, the shot that Venu puts together, which is a really, really good uh, segment, and I will be doing one in a couple of days time so it will be actually uh, the first one of 2021 so i'm sure Venny's going to put together something really special i'm sure um and <laughs> yes great and uh, obviously check out Usher's channel quicker for us 2.0 and as i said if you want a more kind of in-depth pakistan new zealand review check it out for day, for day five anyway and uh, we also touched upon the match as well so uh, we discussed just that one this one obviously we've gone through all three test matches and a fun little a uh, package for Boxing Day, let's say. Okay, uh, thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much.